Thank you. Uh, Senator, can you tell us who wrote this bill? Um, this bill was written by myself and the education lawyer. You, I'm sorry, yourself and the? The Council for Education. What, was anyone else from the Education Committee involved in the process of drafting the bill? No. Was this bill ever considered by the Education Committee? We did have an education savings account bill in Senate Bill 451, and this does take parts out from that. We were requested by some to separate this from the uh, comprehensive education bill, so we did. But, but this bill was not considered by the Education Committee, correct? That's correct. Is there a cap on the number of students who can benefit from Senate Bill 1040? There is no cap. What is the total amount of money that uh, an individual student can receive each year under this program? I believe it is 90% of the state aid portion. Can you do that math for me and tell me what that, what that means? Um, Okay, um, my counsel is saying that he thinks it's about 3850. And those funds can be used for a variety of qualified educational expenses. Is that right? That's correct. To include paying for tuition at a private school? Yes. Tuition at a parochial school? Yes. Tutoring? Yes. Advanced placement exams? That's correct. Okay. The bill on page 10, at least copy I printed, and hopefully our, our copies match up, Senator, uh, on my page 10, line 43, uh, it begins a, a section that addresses how uh, someone may be removed from the program. And it states that uh, an ESA account can be closed if there is a substantial misuse of funds. Do you see that language there? Yes, I do. Is the term, or the phrase rather, substantial misuse of funds defined anywhere in this bill? I'm not sure that it's defined, although we do later give clarity and conditions for the treasurer in terms of determining if there is a suspected uh, misuse. It gives him the authority to bring in the attorney general to investigate a potential fraud or abuse of these funds. I can try to find that section if you wish. I'm familiar with that section, but my question is, do we define in this bill for the treasurer or for the attorney general or anyone else what we mean by substantial misuse of funds? I believe we do not. Okay. Who is responsible for overseeing whether or not there uh, is possibly a substantial misuse of these funds? The treasurer bears the main responsibility. And of course, the parents have to, of course, sign an agreement saying what the conditions are for using the ESA and agree to those terms. The bill references the ability for the treasurer to engage an auditor. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Is that what you mean when you say it's the treasurer's responsibility? It's that the treasurer shall bring in an auditor to oversee these accounts? Again, that is one of the things he may use to help him to oversee these accounts. Now, the bill requires that the treasurer, and this is a shall, not a may, and correct me if I'm wrong, I'm looking at page 13, line 13, uh, requires that the treasurer m must contract with a private organization to administer this program. Would you agree with that? I would agree. Okay. And what 
And it references a, a private financial management firm, is that correct? That's correct. It's not limited to that, but it includes, it could include them. How much will it cost for the treasurer to contract with a private financial management firm to manage this program? I do not know, but we did get a fiscal note from the treasurer. Um, I don't know. I know we have provisions in the bill that say the treasurer can get, of course, is going to get money in order to do this program. So the estimated cost for the first year would be um, total cost 945000 And that cost would go down a little bit in the second year. And then according to this projection, it would go higher in the third year. What does that $945,000 cover? I'm afraid that this is not delineated. Um, he just has personal services, might be 345000 and current expenses would be 400000 and other under $200,000. Um, so it doesn't delineate every single part of it. So do you have a document from the state treasurer that you're looking at? Yes, we do. Has that been provided with the rest of the Senate? Um, actually, I'm not sure. We were expecting third reading to be tomorrow. Sorry. But we, um, of course, can make copies. I'm happy to let anyone see this. Does the information the treasurer obviously provided you address some of these contracts that he's required to engage in under this bill? Um, I don't think it goes into that much detail. Because you would agree, Senator, that the Treasurer also is required to implement a commercially viable, cost-effective, parent-friendly system for payment of services. Is That's that right? That's correct, yes. How much will that contract cost us? Again, I, that isn't delineated here, but I can tell you that it is not um, too dissimilar from programs that the Treasurer already has used for other programs that we manage in this state. What about the cost of contracting with somebody else to audit the ESAs? Do we have an estimate as to how much that will cost? Okay. An auditing firm would be hired annually at the estimated cost of 100000 per year. Thank you. How many accounts could we have audited for $100,000 a year? Okay. Uh, he is doing an estimate of 2,000 accounts. 2,000 accounts will be audited each year for $100,000? That is what it says here in his fiscal note. Which auditing firm is going to do that work for us, if, if you know? I do not know. That's up to the treasurer. Okay. You mentioned earlier that the attorney general has some involvement, and I see on page 14 that the treasurer is permitted to refer cases of misuse to the AG for investigation. Is that right? That is correct. Okay. What is the attorney general to do if he finds that there has been substantial misuse of these funds? I'm assuming the attorney general would do what he does whenever he sees misuse of public funds. He would investigate it. What if he finds that there's substantial misuse of funds? It is the Attorney General um, who is empowered to be able to pursue legal actions to protect the state's interests. So you're saying that the Attorney General has authority to prosecute cases of substantial misuse of funds? That's correct. You're sure about that? Well, oh, okay. In terms of him actually prosecuting, no. He would probably refer it to a prosecutor. But this bill doesn't address that the Attorney General is to refer the, the case to someone who can actually prosecute the, the crime, correct? It refers for him to be able to be involved in an investigation. Now, uh, I don't see anywhere in this bill, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, any reference to the State Auditor's Office having involvement with ESAs. No, is that, that is correct. Okay. Is there, is there a reason why we haven't involve the auditor in this process? 
there is no reason other than the fact that the treasurer is being given the responsibility to find uh, the way to ensure public accounting and auditing of these accounts. Have we thought about asking the auditor to do the auditing so we don't have to pay the $100,000 that you mentioned before? Um, nobody suggested that amendment, but that is, uh, I guess, always a possibility for maybe for the House to do. No, did you consider it when you and your counsel put this bill together? I did not. Okay, moving on to page 15, Senator, there is reference to uh, line 50, uh, the ability of a parent uh, who is deemed ineligible for an ESA to appeal. Do you see that section of the bill? Yes, I do. Okay. To whom would that parent appeal? There is a parent review committee that the treasurer um, is entitled to create, and that parent review community committee is going to be there in order to help advise the treasurer on what is um, eligible uses for ESA funds and can also be a place where they can appeal decisions. Does, does the bill say that the parent can appeal decisions to that parent review committee? Um, let me see where it tells you about that. It says the treasurer may also request a commit. Oh, I'm sorry. This is page 16, uh, starting at line 16 D. The treasurer may also request a committee to meet in person or virtually to review appeals of education service provider details pursuant to 1831.7 of this code and to provide a recommendation to the treasurer as to whether an education service provider should be allowed to receive or continue receiving payments from ESAs. The bill also references appeal rights for ESA providers who are barred for whatever reason. That's Does correct. It, would an ESA provider go through that same appeal process that you just described, or is there another method? No, it would be the same process. On page 15, line 67, it references that the treasurer can contract to establish a fraud reporting service. That's correct. And also an anonymous telephone hotline for fraud reporting. Is that right? That's right. What will the cost of, of those services be to the state? I wouldn't be able to tell you. Do you know how much those programs will cost? No, I do not know. So it's clear that from what you've said and from this bill, the treasurer is being asked to do a lot. And it also appears that you've received some correspondence from the treasurer that I haven't seen. Uh, has the treasurer indicated to you that the amount of $945,000 will be enough for him to at least have the staff to do all of the things we're asking him to do? Yes, he has. Okay. We, uh, let me ask you this. Do you know how many private school students we have in the state of West Virginia? No, I, um, I can't tell you exactly the amount, but I know it's like around 23,000, I believe. Has anybody done a total estimated annual cost for just funding these ESA accounts? I'm sorry, what are you asking? I don't think I understood that. So I know we've talked a lot about the various contracts that um, have to be uh, obtained under this bill, but what I'm asking is at the rate of $3,850 per student, times however many students might end up enrolling in this program and there's no cap as you said has anyone done an estimate as to the cost of simply funding those ESA accounts just the funding of the ESA accounts well obviously it depends on how many actual eligible applicants apply I will tell you that we did discuss um, all the states that already have enacted ESAs and the maximum highest number of any of those states is 3% of the student population. In West Virginia, um, 
again, starting this out and making it only eligible students who are currently in the public school system who wish to find another option for their students. So we're, the estimates that the treasurer made and I think are pretty reasonable is 2,000 students. And at that amount, he estimated it would cost 7.6 million. So the answer is yes, someone has done an estimate as to the cost of this program to fund the ESAs, and that would be $7.6 million. If there's 2,000 students who decide to apply. Okay. And we don't know the cost of all those other contracts that we talked about. Again, I don't know because he didn't delineate everything that's in this fiscal note, exactly what the cost would be, but he assumes that 945000 is what it's going to take. So now you're saying that number does include the contracts that are referenced in the bill? What I said was that it doesn't delineate every single part of having to do the cost, but he gave us what he believes is a fiscal note for what it would cost him. So I can't tell you he didn't separate out every single part. And the treasurer nor a representative of the treasurer is here today to answer questions. Is that right? Not that I... Asked him. I mean, we were on second reading today. So let me be clear about eligibility under this bill for a student. Um, it appears from my reading that a student's eligible for one of these accounts if any time in the prior year they've attended a public school and then they decide to stop attending a public school. That's correct. So let me give you a hypothetical. I've got a friend, his name's Steve. He lives in Ohio County and he's got four students in private schools in that county. And Steve decides, and he pays roughly $20,000 a year uh, to pay for their tuition at those schools. When you add it all up, uh, could Steve enroll his children in public schools just on paper in August before the school year and then immediately change that paperwork, withdraw them, yet still end up with a proof of enrollment because they were enrolled for a day or 30 days or whatever it might take, uh, and then apply to the treasurer and be eligible for this program and receive ESA accounts for his four children. It is in the bill that they have to have attended the public school in the prior school year. I guess you could say that that's um a little bit vague and could be delineated more. Unfortunately, nobody made an amendment to do so. But so, so the, the bill as it stands now would permit someone to enroll their children, get a proof of enrollment. Well, it's in the prior school year. He could not sign up in August and be eligible for this. It would have had to have been in the prior school year. And, and where is where is that in the... It's on page 8, starting on line 11, subsection 4, where it says eligible student. Okay, thank you. Senator, can legislators benefit from... Senate Bill 1040? I don't see how. Um, I guess if you have a child who is currently enrolled in public schools and you choose to withdraw your child, maybe that's a conceivable possibility. Can a legislator open his or her own school and benefit from these accounts? Um, I assume if you are wanting to open up a private school and have that uh, opportunity is available to any citizen who would like to do so. Of course, um, it's a little bit expensive to do so. I don't know if this is going to be enough reason to do it, but it is possible. Do we have legislators right now who will benefit from these this accounts? Is point <laughs> yes, uh, point of order. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. I, I just need a little bit of a clarification. We have, we're 
members of the class, we ask for the ruling of the chair. This questioning that's taking place here right now by whether legislators can benefit or not, I don't see how that can fit into this whenever we ask for the ruling uh, by the, uh, the chair for different things, even in committee and on the floor here. Help me understand what's going on here. But to the gentleman, in response to your inquiry as to point of order, I believe the line of questioning is in order. And uh, as long as the senator from Jefferson continues to yield, uh, we'll continue on. Thank you. For, thank you. Thank you for your inquiry. Does the senator have additional questions for the senator from Jefferson? Yeah. Okay. The, the Does one senator pending. continue to yield? Yes. Will legislators in our body right now benefit from these ESA accounts? Uh, particularly when it comes to owning or operating a private school? That, in re that is a little out of line, I think. M Mr. President, let me explain. We just spent the morning debating or discussing charter schools, and there's a specific provision in that charter school bill that deals with whether or not legislators can benefit. And we were very clear in that bill. And, and I think that kind of a question is appropriate. Right. To, and so that, that's where I'm going with this, Senator is you know, why is it that, and, and maybe it's in here and I don't see it, but why is it that in the bill we discussed this morning, there's a specific prohibition against legislators benefiting, yet in this bill, there's not? So the point of the education savings account is to help students who right now are in the public school system, but they're not being, having their needs served. So the focus was on providing an opportunity for those students who need to have something outside of the traditional public school system to have their needs served. So that was the focus. There was no intention to benefit legislator or any particular person or group of persons or business. The idea is to help the students. So that's what the focus of the legislation was. Is it not important to be consistent, though, and have these kind of prohibitions across the board? Um, well, I will point out that in the uh, charter school bill that we put in protection that no legislator could benefit, I excluded those who were currently working in the public school system and might potentially, you know, keep working as a teacher in a public charter school, and I exempted them because, you know, obviously they are already working as teachers. There's no intention to try to go after someone who is already doing that job. I sort of feel the same way when it comes to this. Um, in terms of this bill, it was not created with any intention to help any individual, and. In, if we wanted to put a prohibition in the future, you know, I want to point out the effective date is not for a whole year. There is plenty of time to add that. And if it was an oversight on my part, I will admit to that. What if there's a private school in West Virginia that discriminates against children with physical disabilities? Would it be okay for state taxpayer dollars from ESA accounts to be used for a school like that? Okay, so in page 17, line 7, subsection 4, any education service provider who accepts ESA funds has to certify that it will not discriminate on any basis prohibited by any federal law for any purpose. And could you tell me that line again? I'm sorry. Sure. This is page 17, line 7, subsection 4. Certify that it will not discriminate on any basis prohibited by any federal law for any purpose. And this is under the requirements for and rights of education service providers. Thank you. No problem. Senator, can you tell me why this bill was separated out from Senate Bill 1039? Well, it was never a part of 1039. We decided to do it separately due to many requests that we received. It was part of uh, 451, or I shouldn't say this was, but there was ESA's part of 451 when we did that during the legislative session, but we chose not to do so now.
Thank you, Mr. President.